Good evening, universe. Tonight is going to be my first attempt at doing a tier list. I was inspired to do this idea by Daniel Green from his like fantasy character strength tier lists, but I specifically wanted to do a YA version because that's mostly what I read and that's what I'm excited about. Oh yes, and I'll be saying what books each character is from because there will be mild spoilers. How it's gonna work is I'm going to go with how however powerful the characters are at the end of the series so that it's going to be nice and consistent. They're going to have whatever tools and or weapons that they would usually have in appearances. So like if they typically have a particular sword with them, they will be armed with this sword in this scenario. And I'm just going to be seeing who is the toughest out of this random batch that I picked. I liked the idea of laying out exactly where this combat is going to be taking place in this case, it's going to be like anime tournament style. So they're in like a particular arena and a loser is decided if they get knocked out or murdered or if they are pushed out of the ring. So if their feet touch the ground outside of the ring, just in case anybody like flies, flying doesn't count. And so those are the three qualifications for what will cause somebody to lose if it comes to like a battle. First, we have from the School for Good and Evil series by Soman Chenani, we have Agatha of Woods Beyond. Agatha is pretty tough in some ways. She is a princess in the School for Good and Evil world, which means that she has access to some spells. I'm going to go ahead and stick her in strong for now. She's better than average because she does have those spells, but because she's a princess, she also has a tendency to faint, and she's not as tough as some of the other spellcasters in her world. Next up, we have a key Eva from the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series by Lainey Taylor. Akiva has a military background. He can do magic. It does come with a particular cost, though. He is pretty scary. Definitely stronger than Agatha. I don't know if I want to put him in super strong. He's pretty scary. I'm going to put him in strong right now, and we'll see. I couldn't find art for him that wasn't, like... I wanted to make sure I wasn't swooping anybody's fan art. So I tried to go with actual official art. So this is to represent Cardin from the Cruel Prince series by Holly Black. He's not really a fighter, but he does have a lot of magic to help him if it came to a fight. I feel like he would mostly not fight if possible. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put him above Agatha, but below Akiva because of the magical powers that he does possess. Although, his magical powers are contingent on fairy, right? And Agatha's are not. Which means that if he wasn't in fairy, Agatha might be able to beat him. She could cast a spell that would throw him outside of the ring or something like that. I'm actually going to give it to Agatha on this one. Nope, not over there. All right, next we have Clary from the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare. Clary's power mostly comes from the runes that she is able to draw and the power of the runes that she can inscribe on people. But she is still a shadow hunter and she is good in combat. Combat. They're all trained for that. I think I'm actually going to move Cardin down to average because, well, he's really tricky though. And he learns like sleight of hand that he can use. So yeah, I'm going to say Clary can beat him because again, he's really not a fighter and he's outside of fairy. So he's going to be at a disadvantage. Clary has a sword. <laughs> <laughs> can Clary take Agatha? Well, Clary can't do magic and Agatha can. So I feel like Agatha has the range. I'm going to leave Agatha in the lead here. Speaking of spellcasters, though, we have Harry Potter from the Harry Potter series. He's definitely going to be able to defeat Agatha. Well, she doesn't need a wand, though. Harry could disarm Agatha, but she doesn't need a wand to cast her spells, which gives her a little bit of a bonus. But it's a little bit unclear what kind of spells Agatha can cast. And I think Harry has more at his disposal that would be useful. Because Agatha can definitely shoot, like, rays of magic and things like that. She can also transform herself instantly. So that's useful. But then what is she going to do after she transforms herself? I'm going to give it to Harry on this one. I think he has more that he can defeat her with because his 
his spells are more uh, flexible. All right, now we have Inej from the Grisha verse, specifically from the Six of Crows duology. She uses knives. The downside of our little tournament is that she mostly does well in the shadows. However, we do see in the books that she can take people on hand to hand. So definitely above Cardin. I think above Clary. I think she could kick Clary's butt because she's also, she's so scrappy. She doesn't have any healing magic though, which Clary does have. But I think if Clary tried to put a rune on herself, you know, like a healing rune, while she was drawing it, pretty sure Inej would just stab her. Because Inej is so fast. She's so fast. And she's also got the range because she can throw those knives pretty nicely. Inej versus Agatha. Agatha can transform. She can blast those knives away. Although Inej is also a lot more like gritty than Agatha. I feel like she would be a lot more willing to like stab Agatha. I feel like Agatha hesitates a little too much sometimes. <sighs> It just, it just feels wrong to put Agatha above Inej, even though she's got her magic. I think Inej would knock her out of the ring pretty quickly to get it over with. But I think Harry would be able to disarm Inej enough to keep her at bay. Maybe use a paralyzing spell, something like that. Oh, I forgot to compare these two. I think Akiva can kick Harry's ass. Akiva doesn't need weapons, so Harry could disarm him. It doesn't matter. Akiva also has his own magic that he can use. Also, I think Akiva would count as being a magical creature, and magical creatures are sometimes shown to be defensive against magical spells. Because Akiva is a magical creature, I think he would count as being defensive against Harry's spells. So I definitely think he would take that. All right, then we have Jesper, also from the Six of Crows duology. Jesper has guns, and that's pretty scary. This is tricky because I think Jesper could beat Harry, but I don't think Jesper could beat Inej. <laughs> I'm gonna put him above Agatha. Everybody's going in strong. Can we get a weakling in here, please? Okay, now we have Jace, also from the Mortal Instruments. Jace is very powerful because he has that angel blood going on. So he is specially gifted. So he'd definitely be able to take on all of these guys. Could Jace take Harry Potter? A great question. Actually, now that I'm thinking about this, I do think Jesper could take Inej just because he does have his guns. And if it came down to a fight, I think he would be able to get those shots off faster than she would be able to get her knives into him. So I think Jesper would be able to take out Inej if pressed. So Jesper versus Jace. Jace has a sword. Jace always has like tons of weapons, but he doesn't fight anybody with guns. This is the problem with guns. Guns are too strong. Guns OP. But because he's a shadow hunter, Jace does have super speed and super strength. How super speed are we talking here though? Because... We never see him like attempting to dodge bullets. Okay, so Jace has superpowers. Inej does not have superpowers. So I'm gonna say that Jace beats Inej, but Jesper beats Jace because Jesper has guns. Okay, now we're looking at Kai from Prince Kai from the Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. So he's a prince, he has a bodyguard. Finally, we have somebody in a different spot. I don't think he's necessarily weak, but he's definitely not trained in any particular combat. So I'm gonna put him in average. He's just your run of the mill guy. Now we have Jude Duarte from Holly Black's The Cruel Prince trilogy once again, Folk of the Air series. Jude is terrifying. And by the end of the series, she does have those extra bonuses. But again, she's not in fairy. So she just has regular terrifying abilities. I'm going to put her right up with Jace because I feel like these two are kind of tied. But again, Jace does have the superpowers. And while Jude is extremely scary, she doesn't have superpowers. All right. Now we have some Rick Riordan characters. Leo. Leo Valdez from the Heroes of Olympus series. Leo is also not really that much of a fighter. He does have a bunch of fire magic though. And he usually has a toolkit full of a bunch of stuff. That is good. All right, so he's definitely at least in strong. He has fire magic. He can make things. He's not really a fighter though. I think he could take Cardin because I think Cardin would not want to get burned by him if he started lobbing fireballs. And could he take Clary? Fire is so scary. Again, Leo is not really a frontline combatant like Percy or Jason. I'm gonna say that Clary with her 
her shadow hunter training and her experience dealing with various types of fire that she can beat Leo. Then we have Karu from Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Karu is a fighter. She knows what she is doing. She does have some impressive magic as well. Some knowledge of certain things. Again, since she is specifically a fighter, I'm going to put her above Leo for sure. I think she could take out Clary, especially because Karu can fly. Being able to fly is going to be a big benefit because she can like swoop in and not have to worry about ring out. She can definitely take Clary. Can she take Agatha? It's so hard to judge Agatha because her spells are very fluid, like what is needed for the story. While she is trained in combat and does have some spells, she's not as trained in combat as Akiva. I am gonna say, I think Karu would be able to take Agatha because I think she lives with enough magic to be scrappy. And no, I don't I don't know if she actually could. She's not used to the kinds of spells that Agatha might be able to pull out. I'm gonna say Agatha takes it. This is so hard. This is way harder than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say Agatha takes it just because she's so versatile. Next, we have Kaz Brecker, who is extremely scary, even though, oh my gosh, my face is covering up the strong tear because I've been putting too many people there. Okay, cool. Now we're down here. <laughs> so Kaz, definitely going to be in the strong tier because we know that he's scrappy enough to take on a bunch of gangsters all on his own, especially because he's got that Grisha made cane. He can definitely take out Cardin. <laughs> I feel like he would be able to like trick his way into somehow dealing with Leo's fire. Maybe not. WWKD, what would Kaz do? a terrible way to live your life. Kaz is so determined though. I think it depends on what he would be able to get by winning and that will change how strong he is. But for now, I'm gonna say that he's stronger than Cardin and he probably can't take Leo just because again, that fi fire is so good. Okay, Matthias. Matthias is tough. I'm gonna give it to Kaz because there were circumstances in which Kaz and Matthias fought and Kaz wins. Percy Jackson of Heroes of Olympus and Percy Jackson, one of my all time favorite characters. Percy Jackson is very tough. We know this from all of his adventures. He has a magical sword. So even disarming him is really difficult. He can definitely take out at least Clary. Percy at his peak versus Clary at hers. I think that's going to put Percy as the winner. Percy has superpowers too because he's a demigod. So he can move extra fast and extra strongly. And he has a bunch of water. So the water is going to be what lets him beat Leo. It also depends like, is he close? to a source of water here, like a, you know, an ocean or something like that. Because if not, that's going to put him at a little bit of a disadvantage. I'm going to say that he can take out Clary when it comes to a fight. Obviously, it gets tricky because his weapon doesn't actually like hurt humans. But I'm going to say he can ring her out. And then Karu would probably be able to take him just because again, she has the flight power. If it was Percy in the ocean, it would probably be a different story. That's what I'm going to go with. Then we have Sophie from School for Good and evil Sophie of Woods Beyond, the Witch of Woods Beyond. Sophie is scary. She's definitely stronger than Agatha because she also has that witchy scream that she can do. It does take her a minute to kind of build it up, but she's also very like pew, pew, pew. She's very good with the spells. So I think she would even be able to outmaneuver Inej. If she can get that scream off, everybody's screwed. I think she could outmaneuver Jude with her spells and the scream. I don't know that she could outmaneuver maneuver Jace though. Definitely not Jesper because once again, Jesper has guns and Sophie has no ability to fight that. Okay, I'm gonna move some things around real quick. First of all, I'm gonna move Akiva up into super strong because of his abilities, because he's able to kick people's butts so frequently. He can go up into super strong. Then we have Sophie. Again, can Sophie take out Jace? She's got so many spells and she's so scrappy. I think Sophie could take it between her and Jace. I think Sophie might be able to, to beat him. Sophie's very scary. I would not want to fight Sophie because she has all of Agatha's spells and some other ones because she's a witch. So she knows some other darker spells. She also has her magical scream and she's also a lot more survival-y. She is really into not losing at things. And I think that desperation, that like scrappiness at the core of her would allow her to 
win. I don't ever see Sophie interacting with guns, so I'm still going to say that gun beats magic. Jesper's guns beat magic. So Scarlet, Scarlet from the Lunar Chronicles. She's supposed to be pretty scrappy and she's also supposed to be good with a gun. She's like tough, but honestly, I don't think she's tough enough to get into the strong category. All of these people, I genuinely would not want to fight. But like Scarlet, I mean, I don't think I could take Scarlet, but I think it's a lot more likely than this tier. So I want to put her in average. She does have a gun though. She does have a gun, but in the scenes where she uses that gun, it's not really that much of a game changer. So I'm going to leave her an average. Tedros. Oh, so many mixed feelings about you, Tedros. From School for Good and Evil, Tedros has Excalibur and he's a prince. He is very strong because he works out constantly. So he's pretty tough. He also has spells. So I think think he would probably be able to figure out a spell to beat Leo. And I think he could take Clary, but I don't think he could take Percy. I think Percy would be tricksy enough and better engaged in combat to fight Tedros. Then we have do 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 Wolf from the Lunar Chronicles. Wolf is obviously very strong. He has been enhanced via Lavana's program. He can definitely take out these guys. I think he even feels less pain, so I think he could take Take out Leo as well. Just kind of barrel right through that fire, not even giving a heck. Can he take out Clary? I mean, he's super strong and super fast too. So yeah, I think so. Can he take out Tedros? Tedros has spells. So I'm going to say Tedros takes it. Spells plus fighting. Oh my gosh, that's everybody. Wow. Let me look this over. See if I agree with this. <laughs> oh my gosh. I totally forgot. Cardin actually has an extremely good ability that I forgot about. Cardin can use glamour. Yeah, that's a game changer right there, actually. That's really good because he can do that to any human. All he has to do is talk to them and they have to like obey his commands unless they've been magically disenabled from doing that, which there's no reason to think that that is true. So, okay, I'm actually going to put him in super strong now that I remember that because with Cardin's ability to glam, it means that any of these people are basically gonna not. What can you do when somebody can mind control you, essentially? So I'm gonna put him here. I'm even gonna put him above Akiva, actually, because Akiva has nothing to fight against that with. But yeah, nobody here has any kind of proof of being able to not be mind controlled by fairies. So I'm gonna say that he's actually the strongest. I'm not gonna put him in godlike, though, because I I feel like those are more like world altering, shattering type powers. Do I think Akiva would be able to beat a gun? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do think Akiva would be tough enough and magical enough to deal with Jesper's guns. I think I'm pretty happy with where everybody else is here. I do wonder again if Sophie could take a chase. If Jude could take out Jace. No, I think this is good. I barely even use these other tiers. I do have a lot of other characters that I want to do this with. Please let me know if you enjoyed this video. This was really fun for me. I would love to compare more characters. Let me know what you think, like who should be in my next tier list. And if you think that I put anybody wrong or forgot about like extremely powerful abilities that they have, like I did with Carden. Thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful night, universe.